Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to move on from binary, hexadecimal, and Dean reconversions, and we're going to look at how real-world information, things like text, sound, images, are represented on a computer. You should be able to understand how and why a computer represents text and the use of character sets, including ASCII and Unicode. Now, ASCII stands for the American Standard Code for Information Interchange, and it's predominantly English-focused, whereas Unicode is universal code, and that allows all the other languages in the world to be represented. You should be able to understand how and why a computer represents sound, including the effects of sample rates and sample resolution. We're going to look at that today. And you should also be able to understand how and why a computer represents an image, including the effects of the resolution and color depth. So we're going to look at three different types of information and see how a computer can process it into binary. Since we already know that computers only process binary, this means all the data from all other types of information must be converted to binary in order for processing by a computer. Now, you already looked at converting numbers, but text, images, and sound also have to be converted into binary. And that's because analog data is continuous in nature, whereas digital data is discrete or distinct. It's limited, for example, 0 or 1. So one form of data needs to be converted into another, and then it also needs to be stored. Now, most students will encounter different types of files, for example, MP3 for sound, MP4 for video, JPEG for an image. You might have various different text formats like TXT. And on screen, you can see an example of some of the common formats that you might have encountered so far. All of these formats store one type of information into binary for processing by a computer. So all you need to remember is those bits in bold. Text, along with all other types of analog data, is converted to binary to be processed by a computer and the definition of analog and digital data. So let's start by looking at text. There are two different types of character sets which allow conversion of writing or text characters into binary. And the first one was ASCII, which stands for the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. This is a seven-bit character code set where every single bit represents a unique character. And this also includes 32 control codes, which are used for things like spaces and escape keys and all of those kind of things. Now, a character set is just a table of symbols and their equivalent binary code. And ASCII was used to fit in the English alphabet, both uppercase and lowercase letters. However, people found that this was very restrictive. And then as computers came across to Europe, European languages need to be represented and therefore extended ASCII was created, which uses 8-bit codes and allows for non-English characters to be represented. Now, this also has a limitation that due to its limited size, other languages apart from English and certain European ones weren't represented, and the world's a huge place. So ASCII can't store the hundreds of thousands of characters that are in all the languages of the world in just seven bits. Now, if you think about Chinese characters, Japanese characters, Cyrillic, Gujarati, Urdu, Greek, think about emojis, all of those bits that we now developed can't be represented in ASCII. Therefore, Unicode was established in 1991, which is also a character set that creates a standard covering all languages and writing systems, including emojis. So the first 128 characters are the same as ASCII to ensure compatibility with older systems. However, Unicode uses 16 bits, and there's also a 32-bit version of it. Now, the problem with Unicode in particular is that since it uses 16 or 32-bit values, there's an increase in storage space, often two or four times per letter. If you look on screen, A in 7-bit ASCII is just 100, 0, 0, 0, 1. In extended ASCII, it's 8-bit, so you've got 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, which basically adds an extra bit to your storage space every time you type in A if you use extended ASCII. When you use Unicode, the same A becomes 16 bits. That means you're taking 16 bits to store a same character. And in 32 bit, it's even larger. So to summarize this particular section, you need to know the differences between ASCII and Unicode. One is a seven bit system. The other is a 16 bit system. So one stores more characters. The other one has limited character set. One takes more storage space because of that reason whereas the other one doesn't. You also need to be able to define a character set that it contains all the characters that are in the character set and the binary value that is assigned to each character. Every time you press an A on the keyboard, there is a character set used, either Unicode or ASCII, which does the conversion for you. Now on screen is a little task if you wanted to do that. Encode your preferred name using ASCII in binary and hex and work out the number of bits used if you're using Unicode encoding instead of ASCII. This should give you a better understanding of how character sets work and how information is stored using them. 
Okay, let's look at sound files. Sound waves require a medium to travel through. So the moment you wave your tongue, sound waves are created and travel through the ear to reach the eardrum. Now the human ear picks up these waves and interprets them as sound. Sound is therefore an analog value and needs to be digitized, which means converted to binary in order to be stored on a computer. And normally we use an analog to digital converter, which is called an ADC in short, to convert it. A sound wave is generally sampled for the sound to be converted to binary, which is then often processed by computers. So what exactly is a sample? Well, a sample is a little piece of sound that's recorded at regular time intervals. And since the amplitude of the sound can't be measured precisely because it's analog, generally approximate values are stored. Now you can see this on the graph. The amplitude is basically the height of the wave. And basically we take these samples at various different time intervals and then join them together to create that sound wave or an approximation of the sound wave. Increasing the number of values to represent the height also increases the accuracy of the sound. For example, if you had to just use two bits, we'd probably have one at the bottom and one at the top. Bits in the middle won't be accurate now because we won't know how the wave got there. If we increase more bits, that means we'll have more levels and that means we can draw the graph more precisely on a computer and that means the sound will be more accurate. Now this is known as the bit depth or the sampling resolution. The number of bits that are used to record each sound sample. If we use 8 bits, that means we can store between 0 and 255 values. And if we use 16 bit, we can store more than 65,000 values. So 16 bit sound will sound better than 8 bit sound. Now the human sound range is between 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz, which means 20,000 hertz. So 16 bit is more than enough because you can fit all the frequencies that the human ear can handle in just 16 bit sound. You don't need 32 bits for sound. And if you ever sold a 32 bit sound system, you just know that that's overkill and you probably are not going to make much use of all of it. So what's the difference between sample rate and sample resolution? Well, the sample rate is the number of samples taken in a second. For example, you might take 10 samples per second, whereas the sample resolution is the number of bits per sample. So these 10 samples are stored at 8 bits or 16 bits per second. So technically, if you were using 10 samples per second and you were using an 8-bit sample, you would be using 80 bits for that entire sampling rate for each second of music. The higher it is, the better the quality the impact is that the greater the file size. So if you're using 16-bit samples, that means your sound is going to be more accurate, but the file is going to be greater. You're going to get high dynamic range. You're going to get less distortion, but it's going to require greater processing power, and it takes longer to download or transmit. 16-bit is the normal sampling resolution used when you want to get accurate sound. Make sure you understand the impact because this is a common exam question. The accuracy of sound recording improves as the sampling rate and sampling resolution increases. However, the file size of the sound increases as the sampling rate and resolution increase as well. And this impacts the transmission time for uploads and downloads of a sound file. So you need to make sure that these impacts are discussed in context-related question where they might give you a scenario. So just to summarize, sampling rate is the number of samples taken per second. For example, 1000 samples per second would be 1 kilohertz. This is like a frequency. And sampling resolution is the different levels of heights which we record using bits. For example, two bits only give you four levels because you only store four possible combinations of zeros and ones. And eight bits will give you up to 256 levels. So eight bit sound will be much better than two bit sound. And the maximum that we can hear can fit into 16 bits. That's all we're going to talk about sampling rate and sampling resolution. Okay, let's move on to images now. Images are made up of tiny dots called pixels. And if an image was simply created using the colors, black and white, each pixel would either be black or white. The binary value could be one or zero. So one could be black and zero could be white or vice versa. So first thing you need to understand is what a pixel is. It's the smallest addressable part of the image, a very small dot of color that is displayed with many others to create the image itself. And these pixels obviously need to be converted to binary for processing. The image resolution is the number of pixels in the image. It's a combination of the number of pixels for the height and the number of pixels used for the width of the image. Monochrome, which is another name for black and white, image requires one bit as a single bit can store two values, black and white, as we discussed. For true color, 24 bits are required, which allows more than 16 million colors. And the number of bits used to represent a pixel is called bit depth. So just like the sampling resolution, we've got bit depth here. The color depth is the number of bits used to represent each color. Now, these terms are interchangeable in the exam. You're probably going to be using the term color depth. 
But generally speaking, bit depth is the number of bits used to represent a single pixel, for example, 8 or 24 bits. Color depth is then the number of bits used to create each color. For example, 8 bit color can give you 256 colors, 24 bits will give you 16.7 million colors. However, for the purpose of the exam, the definition is the number of bits that are used to create each color in the image, that's color depth. Okay, image resolution versus screen resolution. Well, image resolution refers to the number of pixels that make up an image horizontally and vertically. Screen resolution refers to the number of horizontal and vertical pixels that make up a screen display. They're basically the same thing. However, an image resolution applies to an image, a screen resolution applies to a display or an output device. Image resolution these days can be quite high. Cameras go into like crazy 64 megapixels and a normal image is going to be far greater than the one that's listed on the screen 409 ticks times 3192 pixels is normally a 4k image a normal screen resolution might be 1920 times 1080 pixels which is full hd so you can see that we can take images at a high resolution but the screens that we display them on are of a low resolution so the file size and quality of the image increases as the resolution and the color depth increase. And that's exactly like sample rate and sampling resolution. You must realize that an image size is not just a combination of resolution and color depth. It also contains some additional data that provides information such as dimensions, timestamps, and date stamps where the image was created, the file type of the image, and so on. This data is known as metadata. So metadata is just some additional data that is stored within an image that can provide information such as the dimensions, etc. Another thing you've got to be aware about images is pixelation. Bitmaps can be scaled up or down. Bitmaps are images created out of pixel. However, since you change the area, so if I have a small, low resolution image and I make the area bigger, some of the sharpness of the image is lost. Now you can see that in image A and E, they have different pixel densities. So the lower the pixel density, the more pixelated the image. And that's how the quality of the image suffers when you're scaling up bitmaps. Okay, that's all we're going to be talking about for today. You should be able to answer the following questions. What is meant by a character set? You should be able to state two differences between ASCII and Unicode. You should be able to explain the difference between sampling rate and sampling resolution. You should be able to describe the meaning of pixel, color depth, and image resolution. And you should also be able to discuss the impact of increasing the sample rate on sound or increasing the color depth or the image resolution and so on. That's all for this particular lesson. If you do have any questions, get back to me. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.